Hey, so if you guys have been looking for a way to make invoices using Google Spreadsheets, but also using the other capabilities of Google Docs or Google Slides, this video is for you. If we haven't met before, my name is Melinda from Spreadsheetables, where we teach you to create and monetize Google Sheets, which you can use to grow your business and increase your revenue. Now for today's video, I'm actually going to hand this video over to Hash, who's our Google Sheets expert, and he's going to explain this process to you step by step. Now the beautiful thing about this is that you can have all your invoice data stored in a spreadsheet, but you can have it populate into a Google Doc or a Google Slide. Now if you're wondering why you would bother doing that, I think if you wanted to get really creative with the design of your invoices, you are going to be able to create something in Canva and then put it into Google Docs. If you're wondering why you would even bother doing it this way, this video is about to show you why. What I love about it is that you can get creative with the design of your invoices. So you can design something really beautiful in Google Docs or Google Slides, and you can even use Canva to design something into Google Docs or Google Slides, and then link it to your spreadsheet so that it automatically populates. This is an amazing way to really brand and get creative with your invoices. I bet not very many people know about this little trick, so I'm gonna hand it over to Hash and he's gonna show you how to do it. Now creating the invoice directly in the Google Sheet is one option. Another way to do it, which I quite like, is uh, to do it in either a Google Slide or a Google Doc. I'm gonna do it in a Google Slide because that allows us to move things around wherever we want. In a Google Doc, there are a few more restrictions on where we can place things. So if we go to File, Page Setup, I'm gonna go with A4, 29.7 uh, by 21, actually the other way around. 21 by 29.7, that's A4 size. And then we can set up the layout here however we want. If you're not too familiar with invoices, then you can just go to Google and search up an invoice template. Here's some from Canva. Let's go ahead and take this one. We'll customize this template and take anything we want from here. Now the build to, we'll delete that. And the from, well, we can keep that because that's just gonna be our information. The invoice number, We'll delete that, but let's just move this across to there. Actually, we'll just left justify that. We'll change the date so we can bring that in later and then get rid of all of these details in here. There's our basic invoice. Let's click on share, download, PDF. I don't want that as a PDF. I want it as a PNG. Size is fine. That's a nice big size. We'll click on download. Head back to our untitled presentation and drag that right in. There's our invoice, it's a picture, so it's stuck there. If we wanna keep that static and not have it move around, then let's hold Control and press X to cut it. Change background, choose image. Click this download button and drag that in. Click on done, and there's our image and we can't adjust that at all, which is perfect. Now we just need to put in the text boxes. So let's put a text box right here. We'll call that invoice num. Align it with the, uh, the word number And there we go, an invoice that we can use from a Google Sheet. Now the next step is not to open a Google Sheet, but to open a Google Form. Now in this Google Form, we're going to create a lot of the information that we've got here. So first we'll start off with a customer name. We don't want to include their address, we'll get that later. We don't want to include an invoice number, we'll automatically generate those, and we don't want the date, we'll automatically gener generate that as well. As for the description and the quantity, that's the stuff that we want to include and any notes. So we'll start off with notes and then we'll get into the products.
Now we've got a red star next to item one and quantity one. We're gonna leave that there. That just means that it's required. However, for the rest of them, item two, quantity two, we're not gonna have those required because maybe the person's only buying one item. But we will include them just so that we can have them in our invoice. We've got six and I'll just update these here. And if I was doing this for real, I would make these evenly spaced. But let's go ahead and duplicate all these. Um, they shouldn't be an option. They should be a short answer text. And you, you could put in like a, a skew or something. Short answer. And then down here, we'll put a response step validation number. If you want a half number, that's fine as well. You could just have it as is number. Down here, we'll do the same thing. So that one should be a short answer or it could be a drop down box. Actually, a drop down box might be better. And then down here, these would be your line items. For, so for example, you might have socks, a necklace, dog tag. In the quantity, we'll change this to short answer. And again, just like before, we'll change that response validation to is number or whole number if you only sell whole items. In this case, socks, necklace, dog tag, and shirt, those are whole numbers. So now we'll just go through and duplicate these. And then when we click on this eyeball here, we get the customer name, any notes, item one, quantity one, item two, quantity two, and so on. Click on submit, and then you can go straight into submitting another response. Now back here, we can see that we've got a one response here. We'll click link to sheets, and we haven't created a spreadsheet for this. So let's call this sales tracker. Click on create. And now we have a sales tracker. Now it's important that these headers match the information in here. So where we've got the word description, I should really change that to item. Just like that. Cust name should be the same as well. That's perfect. And uh, we'll add in a date in a bit. Back in our sales tracker, if we put a new response in, and click Submit. Then instantly we get this new row. Now over in our invoice, we have the word date, but in our sales tracker, we have the word timestamp. Now we can't change this. So what we'll do is we'll go right to the end and we'll type in here date and we'll write equals date value of A1, A2, sorry. That gives us the 25th of December, 2023. We'll turn that into an array formula so it copies down automatically when new information is added. So let's do date value A2 to A. And at the beginning, we'll write if A2 to A equals blank, then return nothing. Otherwise, date value A2 to A, hold control, shift, enter, press enter, and there's our dates. So as new information comes in, let's just duplicate this. You can see another line comes up automatically. But we're not done yet because we haven't included the customer address, the invoice number, or the prices. So over here in our sales tracker, we need to do a little bit more work. So in a new tab, let's call this one product or whatever you want to call it. We'll create a new one for customers and sales. Now we'll bring the sales in first. So here in A1, we'll write equals and then put a curly bracket. We'll click on form response one and select all of this information here. Close the curly bracket and press enter, and that brings in that information. Let's just add in a column to the left and give this an invoice number. We'll write equals sequence counter, select B1, and we'll go all the way to the bottom. In this case, we get one and two, but let's say that we want to start with the numbers 2300 because it is 2023, and we put an ampersand. That just gives us 23001, we've lost the second one, so we press enter back on here, control shift enter to give us an array formula, and there's our invoice number. That will automatically populate whenever we get a new response. So if we go over here and duplicate this line, we'll go back to our sales, back in our timestamp, we only have until P3, so let's delete the three on that. And now when we add in a new line, let's go to form responses one and duplicate that line there. We now get a new row, with a new invoice number. Let's delete that because we don't actually want it there, but we do want some customer details. So we have the customer name already over there. Then we need customer address and then prices 
and totals for each of the items. So we need item price one. I'm actually going to do this vertically because it's going to save us a lot of time. Item price one, uh, total one. Item price two, total two. And then if we select those, handle down, we get all of that information. I'm going to control C on that, edit, paste special, transpose. There's all of our items, their totals. So for the item price one, we need our list of items. So over in our products, we'll have our product and the price. Socks, shirts, dog tag, necklace, price. In our sales, over here in our item price, we'll write equals VLOOKUP. The item we're looking for is item one. Where are we looking for it? In the product section over here, let's press F4 on that to lock it in place. Column two, press enter. There's our item price. Let's copy that across to item price two, three, four, five, and six. And if we have these NAs, let's just include at the beginning an IFNA. Let's not copy those down just yet because we want the totals equals this multiplied by the quantity of item one right there. That should give us $30. Done. Copy this across. Did we just get one of each of those? Yes, we did. Zero, zero, zero. Copy these down all the way. And that's a lot of zeros. We could write if F2 equals blank, then return nothing. Otherwise, S2 times F2. Copy that across, and those zeros disappear. Copy those down, much cleaner. For the customer address, we're going to do pretty much the same thing. So we have customer name and customer address. Let's put the New Zealand on a new row by holding Alt and press Enter. And there's our customer details completed. You can put in whatever rows you want in here. I'm just setting this up for the invoice. And to finish this off, we just need to connect this spreadsheet to this invoice. So we'll go up to Extensions, Document Studio, click on Open. For this, you get 25 free documents a day. I have the Enterprise Edition, so I get 2,000 a day. We're going to create a new workflow. This is going to be the invoicing. The data source will be the Google Sheet and it's coming from the Sales tab. Click Continue. We're going to process all rows. Click on Continue. Create a file. The document template is the one we just created. Let's call this Invoices. I'm going to have to cancel this and reopen it, I think. There it is. Where do I want to put it? Into Tech Talk 3, where it belongs. Subfolder path, this will create a new subfolder every time you create a new document. So you could put the year 2024, for example, but I'm going to leave it blank. The output file name, let's go with invoice number and name. And it's a PDF. The viewers, don't worry about it because we'll be printing this. However, if you want to email, it, email this, just add in the email into the customers tab and put in emails. We're not going to send a notification email when sharing this file because we're not actually sending this file to anyone, although you really should if you want full automation. We'll click on done. And if you wanted to email this to someone, click on add another task and then send an email. You could also do this for any of these other uh, apps as well. We'll click save, save, save and run. Let's see what happens. We show details, we're doing rows two and three, we'll run the workflow. And the cool thing about Document Studio is even if you've run this before, it's going to recognize that. So if you continue to add in new sales here, it's going to keep track of which ones it's already sent the details out for. We'll close this down, go straight across to here, and we have our files. Let's open this one up and see what has been entered. There's my name. Socks, shirt, dog tag, all of those details there. It's missing the prices and the customer details. Talks too much about spreadsheets. That's the notes that I put in there. So all we need to do is add in the customer name, the customer, the customer address, and the price. 
A few moments later. I'm going to select both of these again and click on Run Workflow. More moments later. Workflow has successfully processed two rows. We'll click Close. We'll click on Christine's one, open that up, and we have invoice number, person, that stuff, the date, everything there, even the subtotal. So just like that, we've created nice, pretty invoices that is fully automated. And with Document Studio, again, you have up to 25 items per day, which is plenty for most people.